Hello MaxTubers! Welcome back to my channel. As per the request of my MaxTubers, I am more than happy to bring you another Sarah Hieronimo video. But before we get into it, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Max underscore two. At the same time, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, watch and comment on my videos here in MaxTube. Before we play the video, note that I got this from the channel of Sarah Heronimo Fan. So if you want to watch the entire video without any interruptions, without my comments, please head to their channel and the link is provided in my description box. Okay, let's start. First and foremost, I'd like to mention how gorgeous she looks. Simple, classy, yet beautiful. She looks like a star without even trying. So kudos to her stylist. I wonder why she changed her microphone. Did she use the wrong one? Or maybe each of the microphones has a different mix? Or maybe it's not even relevant. Let's see. This song is just one of the many originals of Sarah Hieronimo that became hits. And not a lot of people can boast of having local hits, especially at a time when people um, are favoring foreign songs over OPMs, which I think is really a shame. We really need to support local music more. I am actually guilty of this. For years, I haven't been updated with local music. But what I can say is even I know about this song, the iconic Ikot Ikot Lang, Ikot Ikot Lang, Ikot Ikot, which we will hear later in the song. By the way, there are a few parts where she is giving us nasal resonance. Contrary to some beliefs of non-singers, this is actually a legit healthy singing technique. But naturally, you don't use this technique for the entire song, only when it's needed. What's unhealthy is if it starts to sound throaty. That means you're burdening your throat, which may eventually cause damage to your cords. Not the best way to achieve vocal longevity. So I like the effect she is creating with the combination of her chest voice and falsetto. I know I've said in the past that I prefer it when singers are able to retain their vocal power when they shift from chest to head voice. But this actually depends on the song. In this case, it would sound unnecessary and insincere if she retained its power. Besides, I believe she is not using her head voice here. She is using falsetto, which are two different tones. Let's continue. <laughs> 
So far, I'm liking this acoustic version because we get to just focus on her vocals, the way she plays with her voice. I also appreciate the retard they made in that last ikot. By the way, uh, retard means slowing down the tempo. I think it's a nice touch. Very decent ad-libs, nothing overdone, very tasteful, that's all I can say. Moving on. I don't think it is surprising to any of my Max tubers out there that Sarah is known as one of the most expressive singers in the country. And so far, she has been very consistent in all her videos I've watched. I've said this several times in my other videos, that if you fail to express the meaning of the song, even if you are hitting all the right notes, the highest or the lowest of notes, I wouldn't be impressed because it's all about communicating. Love the way she interpreted this part, the character in her voice. Also, she was casually hitting D flat 5 and E flat 5 with an open and bright sound. Sounds nice so far. Let's go back to the clip. I think the best way to describe her voice in this song is it sounds edgy. And it's impressive how she can sound sweet in some songs, edgy in others, rich and thick now, light, innocent, and angelic later. Perfect examples of these would be the videos that I've reacted to so far. Listen to her. Whitney Houston medley with Regine Velasquez, uh, Paraiso duet with Yen Constantino, her version of I Put a Spell on You, also her In the Name of Love duet with Regine. She's a vocal chameleon. Love the intensity she is giving us, the punch in her voice without sounding shouty. Let's continue. That sudden pause there is very dramatic and I like it. I like it very much. In fact, in my own live performances, I do that a lot whenever I want to get my audience's attention and it never fails. It always works.
Okay, she's moving back to the first microphone, so I guess it wasn't a mistake after all. But I don't know why. Okay, now I understand. I understand why she was using two microphones. The first mic, the black one, has a harmonization uh, gadget attached to its line, which automatically generates a second voice from her real voice upon activation using a foot pedal. Also, I heard a click from the gadget, which was playing back the harmonization she just did herself. All this time, I thought she had live backup singers. She is her own backup singer. Cool. Multitasking. I hope you are all hearing what I'm hearing. I always wanted a gadget like that that I can use in my own live events, but I have yet to purchase one. Because the last time uh, I bought an audio-related gadget from the US via online, the tax imposed was even more expensive than the actual unit price. So I'm still thinking, if it's actually going to be worth it. This is the thing. When you are using a gadget like this, you need to be very, very precise with your notes. One single mistake, one single mistake will cause the entire harmonization to go off key. And that's not going to be pleasant. Actually, I rewatched the official video earlier before watching this. In both versions, she was able to deliver voice, emotions, but the difference with this performance is I am not distracted by the visual elements of the original video. Because as you all know, it was a very creative video with a lot of interesting choreography. So watching both videos gave me two different experiences. It's a good thing she didn't get confused with so many vocal elements going on at one time. And don't forget, she did all of these layers all by herself. That just means she has a very sharp sense of hearing and a laser sharp focus to be able to pull off something this complex. Personally, I appreciate the overlaying of these vocals, creating the fullness necessary to compensate uh, to compensate for the very light accompaniment. Let's return to the video. It 
almost sounds a bit alternative and ethnic at the same time, the way she is chanting, and it sounds great. So far, I cannot find anything negative to say, so let's go back. Imagine having to sing over your own powerful vocals. It's Sarah versus Sarah. And guess who won? Sarah. I'm not sure if that uh, was a growl right over there, but if it was, I wished it was a bit stronger. Other than that, everything sounds perfect. I always love it when she gets lost in her own performance. That's part of her appeal. She gives her all. And we as the viewers and listeners can sense that dedication. The way she immerses herself in her performances. She doesn't take things for granted. And most importantly, I appreciate her musicality and originality. It's funny I mentioned originality because she has been criticized many, many times for sounding like other artists like Celine Dion, Beyonce, Whitney Houston. But I believe it is an art, an art to be able to combine all of these different references, these different influences, and eventually come up with your own distinct sound. Besides, no one gets born into this world with his own original style. It needs to be developed. It needs to be polished, just like a diamond with its own unique characteristics. And no doubt, Sarah is one of these diamonds in the entertainment industry. The awards she has received locally and internationally are proofs of this. So what do you guys think of this acoustic version of this hit, Ikot Ikot? Do you like this or do you like the original one better? Please comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. With that, thank you all for watching and please don't forget to hit subscribe, the notification bell, watch and comment on my videos here in MaxTube. Stay safe and happy everyone. Take care.